All right, much more obvious physics question this time is about spring. Anytime you see spring, it's almost definitely going to be um, physics. All right, and um, we've done similar ones like this before. Be careful, you're being asked to measure this. So literally, you're taking your pen, your ruler, you're measuring the value. Now, what I come out with there is, oh, sorry, I'll flip it onto this side, is I come out to about, on my side, about 53 millimeters, okay? And um, taking up the point, obviously, that we're looking at millimeters here, all right? Now, this is not the same as on the mark scheme. I think the mark scheme says 55. That's because of the scaling error. Do not worry about it. Okay, this means that some of our data is going to be a bit wrong later, that doesn't matter. You have to do the same thing again for B, I think we're all able to use a ruler. Okay, and I measured that to be 132. Okay, again you're taught through this table, you're asked to do a little bit of um, calculations. Okay, extension, well I've just calculated my extension which is just the length minus length 0. 132 minus 53 is 50, 79 millimeters. Okay. We're then asked to calculate the value of t squared. Well, notice here we're giving all of our, we've got our period to three significant figures, our t squared to two. And so, therefore, if we take uh, 0 0.667 squared, 0 0.4448, okay, just 0 0.44, and we have to enter it in. Okay, notice nothing to do with units here. However, it's a really good thing for you to check, please, that you're not having to add anything else in there. Now, once you've got a table, you've got a plot of graph. Now, um, this is my graph. I want to talk you through how I did it with reference to the uh, table. So I'm going to be flipping back and forth between this. Notice first, in this one, this is a slightly lower scoring graph than previous ones because you're only given two marks. Why only two? because they've told you what should go on each of these axes. Okay, it's not always the case. Now, if I look at my graph, um, okay, I have to plot my data, but before I do that, I have to decide my scale. Now, when I was doing this, again, you're trying to make sure that you're using as much of this uh, sheet as possible. The guideline is over half. Uh, how we judge that is a bit difficult, but I would suggest that your data should be spanning at least half of each of these axes, okay? Now if I look at the um, data here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, five and a bit boxes up here. I'm going, I've got to begin from zero, zero. It says somewhere in the, ah yes, up here. I've got to begin at zero, zero. So on my T squared, that's on my Y axis, I'm going from zero up to 0.8. Well I thought, okay, zero to 0.8 is basically zero to one. I'm going 0 to 1, okay? So each of those boxes is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, I hope that's clear, all right? Then I had a decision to make here on the bottom, okay? Now this is kind of funny because what I wasn't sure was I thought I had um, a couple of options here. What I could have done is 0 to 50, and then 50 to 100, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that would take me up to 50, 100, 150, 200. So I thought, okay, is that enough? Yeah, possibly, yeah. But I want to stretch out a little bit more. Instead of going for 50s, I'm going to go for 40s. And you see why there's a benefit here as well? If you notice here, that my extensions basically go up in 40s. All right, I go from 80 to basically 120, to 160, and then basically to 200. So there's a reason I, uh, I realized afterwards, um, once I'd done this, that was actually quite a neat way of doing things. We've got the thing stepping up in 40s. Well, let's make our scale do that as well. All right. Now these um, points are really nasty ones because we've got some quite uh, a lot of significant figures. So in the marking, actually, yeah, you you've got to plot uh, four points. They allow you to have one of those wrong, which is quite a nice bit of um, a nice thing for them to allow us. Okay. Usually, you've got to get them all correct. Okay. Best fit straight line. Okay, again, we're trying to do that balance. We're trying to move our line, our ruler around. You try actually next time to use a see through one, it can let you see your data. And um, to make sure that we've got a decent spread of those data points. Now, actually, I found that we've got four data points. Once I've drawn mine, one, two on the line, this one possibly just below, just on, 
and this one's below. Okay, if I'd redrawn my line, I might have repositioned it a little bit, but I think this is good enough. We're very close to all these data points. They're very nice and straight. Notice I have not forced my line to the uh, origin. Okay, you are not having to do that here. It does not say to do that. You're then asked to calculate the gradient. And you know this from maths, but you should be able to do it, and so you should be able to do it in physics. The gradient is just the change in y over the change in x. But you are being asked to show, and you're being asked to indicate on your graph the values you chose to enable an accurate value of the gradient to be calculated. It is really important that those values that you choose are very far apart. Ideally, as far apart as possible, but if you, can, if, if you can't do that, come at least half of this line and um, the distance of this line away okay so this point to this point, point one and point two should be at least half of this hypotenuse away i've chosen these points i've labeled their values okay i'm trying to make it really easy for the person marking my paper to see what i've done i've then taken those data values and i've calculated my gradient i've done the top over the bottom I've shown all my steps and i've gone to a gradient to three significant figures. I was very proud of my gradient because then I had to take my value 0 0.0395 and then divide it by my value and I got 9.81. That is the best result that I could hope for there because that is the value of G. Okay. Again, quality assurance check. One, you're not expected to get 9.81 here. You're expected to get a number which is decent. What does decent mean? Well, you know G is equal to 10 or Oh, geez, really, if we're in real world, 9.81. So if you're getting something um, close to that, then you're doing well. Okay? If you are getting numbers of 0.1 or 0 0.01, then something has gone wrong in your processing. So you need to be going back and checking. Do not just get a number and then move on. The gradient, you can't tell it from the gradient, but you can tell from this value of G. G, you know already acceleration of free fall it should be around about 10 so use that information to check the quality of your work all right last one let me just move my, my wire away sorry okay um we're asked to avoid this thing called line of sight parallax right and this is actually something i've talked about in a previous video we'll just uh recap if i'm measuring something okay i need my eye to be in line with the measurement okay i don't want to be measuring from up here and i don't want to be measuring from down here if i measure from down here then it, i'll measure something too big and if i measure from up here it'll measure something too small i need my eyes to be in line okay other ways of making sure that this is um so i said here make your eye in line there's lots of ways of putting this people talk about it being perpendicular okay but obviously you can do another bunch of things you can be keeping your eyes as close to the ruler as possible and also having the ruler as close to the spring as possible we talked very previously about using clamp stands about using set squares to make sure that the, the uh, ruler is vertical there's a whole bunch of really simple sense uh, sensible and uh, effective ways of making sure this works you need to list one